So you want to get into film photography, but you have no idea where to start. There's tons of cameras on the market right now, and it can be confusing and intimidating. So here is a video on how to purchase your first film camera. Figuring out where to start with film cameras can be difficult because there's so many brands and models. But what you should know is that there's a few main categories when it comes to film photography. You have point and shoot cameras, you have SLRs, TLRs, range finders, and zone cameras. For a beginner, I highly recommend the SLR camera. You have to remember that cameras are tools at the end of the day, and whatever works for you and is easiest for you to use and really just makes you go shoot is the perfect and right camera that you should be using. Now figuring out what you should land on as your first camera can be the tricky part and some cameras are easier to learn on. And that's why I think if you're just starting out and trying to get into film photography, you should start with an SLR camera. This is a Canon AE-1 program and it's also an SLR film camera. This was my first camera I purchased and I highly recommend it if you want to get into photography. Now there's other brands like Pentax, Nikon, uh, Olympus, they all have versions or similar versions to this camera. Why is the SLR a good intro film camera? A lot of times these SLR cameras are easy to come by because they were mass produced. A film SLR camera has some qualities about it that makes it easier to learn on. Now an SLR camera has a 45 degree angled mirror on the inside of the camera and it's reflecting the exact image into the lens, bouncing off the mirror and it's showing it through the viewfinder. So when you look through the viewfinder, you're seeing exactly what's in front of you. And it's a lot easier to focus because of that. Your lens, you're seeing exactly what the lens is focusing. Now compare that to another camera that uses a different type of focusing system. This is the Nikonis V. It's an underwater film camera, super fun, but it uses a zone focusing system. When you look through this viewfinder, I'm not actually seeing what's going into the lens. Uh, because this is a underwater camera specifically, it has to be sealed up in certain parts, so it has to use a different system. And this camera actually uses a distancing system. So I can set the focal length in meters or feet, and then you kind of have to guess. So if there's something in front of me that's in three feet, I have to set my lens in an area that will focus within the three feet and then take the picture. Another reason I like SLR cameras to begin with is because a lot of times they have built-in light meters. Now, one of the most important things when it comes to film is exposing your film properly. And in order to do that, there has to be enough light in the area you're shooting to expose the film correctly. And that all depends on the type of film you're using. Now every camera brand and model type is different. As long as you find one that has an internal light meter, it will help a lot when you're first starting out. And a lot of these SLRs also even have an auto mode. Some of them have an auto focus system with lenses. Now the Canon A1 doesn't have an auto focus system. Some newer SLRs that were made in like the early 2000s and late 90s actually have an auto focus system. And you can shoot in almost a full auto mode. I prefer shooting more manual and I like this as a starting camera because it gives you the option to shoot in manual but if you're new there is an automatic mode where it will choose the right aperture and right shutter speed to shoot at. Now it won't auto focus so you have to manually focus on this specific camera but again every camera is different. So do your research and make sure it just has a light meter and pick up a good lens with it if you can. So is there any catch to using an SLR as opposed to maybe a TLR, a range finder, or even a point and shoot camera? There's really nothing that's a deal breaker in my opinion if you're just starting out. A lot of these cameras you can buy for a pretty low cost, around $100 or even less. So if it's something you don't get super attached to, you have a low entry cost right away. They're pretty cheap and you can get them pretty easily. The only thing that's really a big difference between something like a rangefinder and a SLR is the size, weight, and sound. An SLR is gonna be a bit heavier and maybe a bit bigger because they have a bit more mechanical components on the inside due to them having automatic and battery required features. The other thing is that the sound of the camera when you take it is gonna be a bit louder. <laughs> So the SLRs have a, usually have a famously loud noise of the, the mirror or whatever it is flopping down and the sound of the shutter. So here we go. While it isn't the loudest noise, it is loud enough to someone go, <laughs> like you just took my picture. Range finders, because they don't have the mirror in that system, going <laughs> they are much quieter. The Leica M6 is famously known for how quiet it is. It's such a nice click. But other than that, this camera is a great camera to learn on and to start on. 
It gives you the ability to learn how to shoot manual and dial in your shutter speed and your aperture all while exposing your film correctly because it has a built-in light meter. Now it may not be the best light meter in the world, but it is a great starting point. Okay, so now that we've talked about a bunch of SLR stuff, where do you even buy an SLR film camera? Now there's lots and lots of places you can go to nowadays because of the internet. I would first and foremost start with family members. Wow. You'd be surprised how many of our parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts, whatever, have these cameras just lying around, maybe sitting in the attic or a cupboard that just hasn't been used in a long time. You can probably get it for free if you just ask them nicely. So after you've expensed all your options of your family members and they don't have one, then it's time to look on the internet. I would first go to Facebook Marketplace, honestly, for something like this. Again, so many people have these cameras. You're probably better off going on Facebook Marketplace to get one locally and have it quicker. The only downside to Facebook Marketplace is sometimes people don't really know what they're selling and they don't know the condition it's in or if it even works because they probably just found it from one of their family members. So look at the pictures, ask questions. If it sounds sketchy and it doesn't look like it's in good condition, then I would move to another source. I would look at eBay or a vintage camera store or even a used camera site like KEH. Or is it K? I don't know what it's called. I find more authentic and knowledgeable people actually selling stuff on eBay than Facebook Marketplace. But again, still be cautious. Make sure it's in good condition and it works. Ask questions and DM the seller. Your best place to find a used film camera is probably a vintage camera store or even just a camera store. They might have those as well. However, it might be more expensive. They might mark up the price a bit more and you might not be able to bargain or make offers like you would be able to on eBay or even Facebook Marketplace. However, buying something from a used authentic camera store is going to be more authentic. It'll most likely have been tested to make sure it's in working condition. You might pay a little bit more, but you are getting a verified working camera. So once you've settled in on a camera that you like, a brand that you like, or whatever, it is time to get some film. Unfortunately, right now, film is a little expensive. And actually, I think Kodak is employing a lot more people to help with the demand of all the film. So what film should you start out with? Unlike a digital camera where you can change the actual ISO to brighten or darken the image, you cannot do that on a film camera. The ISO speed of the film is permanently set. So Portra 400, which is again, a very popular, commonly recommended, great film stock, is set to a 400 speed ISO. Portra 800 set to 800 ISO. It's a higher speed film, which means you can use it in more environments where you might have less light. I currently have a Kodak Gold 200 loaded in here, which is a good daylight film. If you're shooting in broad daylight, you can shoot at a lower ISO and have more range to use higher or lower aperture or, in, or shutter speed, vice versa, all that stuff. But now it's becoming winter, it gets darker earlier, it just feels a little bit darker. Sometimes it's good to use a higher speed film like Portra 400 or Portra 800 so that if it starts getting darker earlier, you still have a bit more wiggle room to shoot your film because it's graded at a higher ISO. There's a ton more to that, but hopefully that explains it a little bit. Again, do some research. I highly recommend Portra 400, Portra 800, Kodak Gold, HP5 Ilford. Regardless, there's lots of film out. Find a camera that works for you, fall in love with it, fall in love with film, join the film community, and let's make some good photos. If this video was helpful, please, please like, comment, subscribe, all that ish, you already know. Leave a comment, let me know what camera you're using or what camera you're interested in. If you have any questions, I will do my best to respond. Cool, all right, stay awesome, yeah. Okay, we're gonna end this video now.